Now then guys, you're watching Range 23, my name's Bob, welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this. This is the brand new AR-15 from Calibre Innovations, a UK made AR-15. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look over this today. So in typical Range 23 fashion, we'll start by going over the specs and features of the gun. Then we'll take it out on the range, see how it performs, see what this thing's actually like to shoot with. Uh, and when I say new, I mean new. This thing was kind of literally assembled and then shipped straight up to me for test and review. So yeah, let's crack on. So first things first, this is a mil spec rifle, which is nice. It means if you want to change the caliber, you can pop a different upper on there. Uh, these, these are available in 223, 300, etc., etc. Uh, this one, if you haven't already noticed, it's a 22 long rifle build. Uh, and this is kind of the standard um, configuration. These rifles will come in like the kind of the base rifle, I guess you'd call it. Um, but you can change bits and pieces out. You can change stock scripts, etc. during the build process. Calibre do offer that service. You can even go for like slab sided uppers if you don't want uh, forward assist and things like that. Uh, and they also offer Cerakoting services as well. All, all different parts to be coloured and, and what have you to, to customise your gun even further. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to be taking a look at this base gun today. So enough about all that. Let's crack on and look at this. So like I say, this is a UK made rifle or as, as UK made as you can get realistically. Uh, so let's start by taking a look at these receivers. So you'd be uh, forgiven for thinking they were just a bog standard forge set, but you'll notice there's no forge marking on there. That's because these are actually a matched billet set made by Calibre Innovations here in the UK. Uh, in terms of style and kind of features, they are very much like a standard receiver set. There's nothing too fancy about them, but they are very nicely machined, very nicely finished as well. The anodizing is really good on there. Tolerances as well, tolerances are all very tight. There's absolutely no slop, no rattle at all between those two receivers, which is what we'd expect from a, from a billet set realistically, guys. That's kind of one of the reasons you go billet is to get that nice tight tolerance, that nice fitment. So those tighter tolerances do lead to things like the pins just being a little bit tighter to pull out. I have needed a, a, a tool to push them through. But like I said, this is a brand new built rifle as well, so they may well bed in. And things like the, the mag, well, you can tell the mags fit a little bit, a little snugger in this than in some others, but they're still drop free, so no dramas there. Yeah, it's a, it's a very nice, uh, nicely made receiver, to be honest. Uh, it's not laser marked or T-marked or anything like that on the top, but we do have the Calibre Innovations logo. Um, and all the bits and pieces there. And then we have a laser markings here for uh, Calibre Multi and also your serial number. But apart from that, like I say, you'd be forgiven for thinking they were just a kind of standard forged set, something like an arrow, something like that. So moving forward from the receivers to the handguard, we've got Calibre Innovation's own UK made handguard again, same as the receivers. Uh, and don't get too excited though, because it's not a quad rail. Instead, they've opted for an M-Lock unit. A uh, very slim, lightweight M-Lock unit. You can see how skeletonized that thing is there. It's got M-Lock at the three, six, and nine o'clock positions, but in an absolutely abhorrent move, they've gone and removed the Picatinny from the top rail as well and replaced it with yet more M-Lock. Now, as unforgivable as that is, it's, uh, it's actually a really nice handguard, to be fair. It's, it's very slim, but it's very comfortable. There's no sharp edges. It's very well machined. It feels nice to come onto as well. And to be fair, you can really appreciate that lightweightness on it. You do have, obviously, Picatinny at the back end here and a little bit at the front end there for mounting the sight or a, or a light or anything like that that you want to put on there, or laser or whatever you want to call Sam Fisher. But yeah, it's actually a really nice little handguard. The lock up on it's really tight as well. It just uses a standard kind of clamping friction lock on there, for the secondary set of grub screws. But I've noticed no twisting, nothing coming loose or anything like that. It seems to be a nice, sturdy little unit. That's what she said. Again, anodizing, finishing on it, it all seems really nice. Uh, and then up at the front end of the gun, we've gone for an enormous muzzle brake, three chamber muzzle brake there that looks like it'd be more at home on a PRS rifle than a 22, but it does, uh, does a good job to uh, tame that enormous recoil of a 22. And with this being a 22, obviously it is running a CMMG arc bolt in there. If you hadn't already seen that. Again, it's, you know me guys, I love those bolts. They're, they're Proven, reliable, dependable, easy to clean, a lot of aftermarket support from great magazine compatibility with them as well. Uh, that is coupled to CMMG's barrel as well, their standard kind of 22 factory barrel. That is a 4140 steel government profile barrel. This one is 16 inch um, with a happy 28 muzzle threadings and a 1 inch 16 twist rate. Proven, accurate, reliable barrels. You know, uh, you can't go wrong with either of those things there, guys. 
So let's just jump back to the receiver and have a look at the controls on the gun. Nothing too fancy on this base rifle. It's a fairly kind of standard uh, mil-spec affair. We've got a mil-spec uh, dust cover, which is operational, if that's your thing. Standard uh, single side magazine release. Again, mil-spec bolt paddle, one-sided. 90 degree safety, again, just on the single side of the gun. The trigger is uh, like, a, I'd say about a, a six pound trigger, single stage. Um, yeah, I'd say that's about six pounds. It's got a decent clean brick. It's an AR trigger. Most AR triggers are, uh, are pretty decent. Um, so yeah, can't complain at that. It's good for, if you want to go fast, it's good if you want to shoot some groups. Uh, it's not the best, but definitely not the worst. Uh, it does the job well. Uh, we've got standard mil-spec takedown pins on this. Uh, we've got a standard forward assist on this model as well. The trigger guard is a Magpul style enlarged. Uh, trigger guard there and the charging handle is a radiant style ambidextrous charging handle not had any trouble with any of those controls or or any kind of problems with them at all uh, the gun is also running a better mag adapter up there in the magwell to be compatible with smith and wesson magazines obviously you can remove that and run other magazines if you wish personally i like the better mag adapter i run it in my personal rifle I find it's it just um, it's just easy to get magazines in there. There's less for them to get kind of caught up. It seems to guide them in a little bit better. Just my personal preference, but um, obviously you can run catch 22s, whatever. But this one comes with a better mag, so good choice there from Caliber. Moving back, uh, we've just got a bog standard six position um, receiver extension tube there. That is covered by a DLG minimalist stock six position, uh, obviously on the buffer tube there. Uh, that's a nice little stock actually, very lightweight, it's got plenty of places if you want to put a sling on it, it's also got QD mounts on either side of it. There is a little bit of rattle to it, but no more than any other stock, you know, it's, it's got a rubber base place, it's a stock guys, you know, it's just a, it goes in your shoulder, it just, it does a job. Um, it's, it's kind of, there's not really much else to say about that one. Um, and then we've also got a rubber overmolded DLG pistol grip. Uh, it does have kind of thumb shelves on it and finger grooves in it and it's very aggressively textured. Uh, personally, I don't like rubberized grips. I definitely don't like profiled grips. Um, but this one's not bad at all. I've not had any issue with it. It's not, it's not been funny coming onto the gun or anything like that. It does also provide a hell of a lot of grip, certainly in the wet. I've shot this thing in the rain a few times and there's no slipping or anything like that on there. Yeah, even running gloves, it's, it's fine. So nothing wrong with that there. So that just about covers the build of the rifle from front to back. So let's uh, get out on the range and see how this thing actually shoots and performs, shall we? So the first thing you're going to notice when you pick this gun up is how lightweight it is, certainly at the front end. Considering it's got a full length 16 inch barrel under that rail, uh, it's definitely a very lightweight, pointable, snappy little gun. Uh, they've done a great job of removing weight with this fore end. You can see just how kind of skeletonized it is there, how low profile and lightweight it is. Uh, and as a fully fledged member of the quad rail gang, I did find that a little bit unnatural at first. But after a few target transitions, you do kind of get into the swing of it. Like I say, it does make it a really snappy, pointable gun. Uh, and the other good thing about that as well is if you are a stay-at-home husband, it won't fatigue your arms quite as fast as a quad rail. And with that forearm being so lightweight and, and so slim, I do kind of feel it's it's kind of uh, pushing more towards the competition market and set and rightly so, you know, like I say, it's a really snappy, lightweight gun to use. Uh, but nothing wrong with using it in the field either. But yeah, I would say it's kind of aiming more at that uh, competition market, realistically. So when it comes to accuracy, the gun is going to be more than accurate. Um, it's using the CMMG 22 barrels, which we've shot loads of. They're a proven, accurate design. Um, I've never had any issue with any of them. This one seems to be par uh, on par with the rest of them that I've shot. I've been shooting it with a 6X magnifier and also tried it with a Vortex 1-8 Strike Eagle on there, shooting some groups at 80 and 100 yards with this one. Um, I was getting between two and three inch groups, depending. Uh, probably, if I'm being honest, consistently three inch groups with me behind the trigger and blazer ammunition, which is not known for its accuracy. Uh, certainly not at range, it seems to drop off quite a bit. But it's my experience that these CMMG barrels with the right ammo will shoot a lot more accurate than that. But I'm not gonna sit and accuracy test every single rifle with a CMMG barrel that comes through here because it's largely pointless. They're essentially all the same. So yeah, more than accurate enough for what you're gonna need it for, certainly for this type of rifle. So no problems there. So let's talk about reliability. 
I've put uh, close to a thousand rounds on this gun, almost nearly exactly a thousand rounds through this thing. Uh, all CCI Blazer, which is fairly cheap ammo, but it's proven itself to work extremely reliably in semi-autos. For me, it's my kind of go-to testing ammo. I run it in my personal gun as well. Uh, and I'm happy to say that this thing, uh, every single one of them, no malfunctions whatsoever. I've no failures to feed, no failures to extract, ejects, no light strikes, no uh, case um, death jams, anything, anything like that. Uh, so yeah, really, really pleased with that. The gun performed admirably with all them. Uh, but I will say it's it's running the CMMG barrel and bolt, and to be fair, that that's what we should expect from a well set up gun running the CMMG barrel and bolt. We shouldn't be getting any failures with that, other than say like a badly primed round, which no gun can do anything about. But if a gun is set up well, which this one seems to be, um, it should just run. It should it, we shouldn't be having any issues with it. If you're having issues, you've probably got something wrong with your gun. So yeah, really pleased with that. Can not fault the reliability of this rifle at all. And I will say that about half of those rounds, about say about 500-ish rounds, were shot with the gun suppressed uh, using this little suppressor. This is Calibre Innovations Armour Suppressor, little uh, rimfire um, rated suppressor. Uh, it's a nice little unit. You can see very compact, all aluminium, very lightweight, monocore baffle stack in there. I won't get too into it um, and we won't put it on the gun because YouTube's having a funny fit about that at the minute. Um, but yeah, the gun ran really well suppressed and unsuppressed, no drama either way. So yeah, we'll do maybe a little video on that uh, later on actually when, uh, when YouTube's calmed down. <laughs> so the gun is definitely a runner. Uh, the only slight hiccup I had with it from time to time was the bolt not always locking back on the last round fired. But um, all it is is the there's a full power bolt paddle spring fitted to this, like a, what you find in the 223 gun. Uh, if you don't, if you're not familiar, when you're running Smith mags or, or 12, 22 mags with the better mag adapter or even a Catch 22, you should really be running a lower powered bolt paddle spring. Uh, it just makes it easier for that bolt to lock back. Still to lock back. Doing it down again with certain mags. I think it's just because this bolt catch is using a full power kind of 223 powered spring. Spring. I did contact Calibre Innovations about it and they basically said it was just a slight oversight on their part. They built this gun up to get it shipped out to me straight away uh, and they just forgot to put that part in there. But all the production um, 22 Calibre rifles will be coming with that lower powered spring. So no issue there whatsoever guys, that'll, that'll enable the bolt to lock back all the time. Um, but in the interest of transparency I just thought you know I'd let you know that because it's something I experienced with the gun. Uh, so I'll put it in the in the review there. Uh, the other thing to note as well is that um, I, when I first got the gun, I just give it a quick wipe down and a clean, nothing major, just kind of put a pull through it, uh, wiped it down, bit of CLP. Uh, and then I haven't cleaned the gun in the thousand rounds that I've shot through it. So it has been getting progressively dirtier as well. So again, just thought I'd throw that in there. It's not like I've been treating this like a princess or anything like that. It is absolutely gummed up to all hell in there uh, and it's still carried on running. So yeah, she's a runner. But yeah, other than that, I can't really pick fault with this gun. Um, if I had to be nitpicky, I'd say that so every now and again, the safety just drags a little bit on that rubber grip there, depending on where it is. Sometimes it's all right, but if you're kind of pushing into it, sometimes it drags on the rubber there. It doesn't stop the safety coming off or anything like that. It's just a, a niggle, just an annoyance. Uh, again, I've mentioned that to Calibre. Um, but yeah, apart from that, uh, I've had no, no issue with it really. It's been drama free. So yeah, there's, there's not really much else to say that we haven't already covered, guys. I, I suppose my kind of final thoughts on the rifle would be it's um, it's kind of predictably boring, if that makes sense. That's that's not a bad thing. It's not a, it's nothing against the gun. It's actually a, a compliment, to be honest. Uh, a gun that just runs, that you don't have to worry about. It's a, a very well-built gun using good quality components for the most part. It's it's accurate, it's reliable, You've, it's obviously a mil-spec gun. I always advise anyone who's in the market for this style of gun um, to go for a mil-spec route, regardless of who builds it, go the mil-spec route because it's just infinitely upgradable compared to some of the other offerings out there like Chris's and Tipman's and Smith's and things like that. Um, and the other good thing about this rifle is it's coming in at a decent price right now. It's uh, 11.45 for this package as you see it, without the optic but with the mag, that's coming in at 11.45 which I think is a pretty competitive price to be honest. When you consider it's using UK made receivers and handguard, I don't think you can go wrong with that. Like I say, you've got the upgradability there as well for future proofing it. If you want to change bits and pieces out, change an, uh, a different caliber up for foxing or whatever it might be. Um, if you're in the market for this type of rifle, 
I'd definitely consider checking this one out, guys. It should definitely be on your shortlist. Um, like I say, for that money, I, I don't think you can go wrong, to be honest. Uh, and I'm not shilling um, for, <laughs> for Calibre Innovations, far from it. Um, this rifle's going back to one that was just sent up to me for review. But yeah, I like it. It's nice. It's a good gun. It feels nice to get behind. It's a solidly built platform. Yeah, great stuff. So that just about brings this one to a close guys thank you very much for watching as always i hope you've enjoyed that or at least found it informative if you have make sure you smash that like button don't just hit it absolutely smash it make sure you subscribe to the channel as well because those are the rules and yeah stay tuned because we've got some great stuff coming up on the channel new rifles new optics all that kind of stuff all coming out shortly and um, so yeah stay tuned guys check out the socials and i'll uh, i'll see you in the next video guys cheers